going to show you how to do a really fast mini prep that gives massive amounts of high quality DNA and costs only about five cents. Actually, I already have a long version of this protocol on YouTube that has uh, more details and tricks in it. This is the short version. To save time and plastics, cultures can be grown directly in two mil tubes with a small hole poked in the top. The hole can be poked in the lid with a 26 gauge needle. This allows the culture to breathe. Optionally, the hole can be sealed after the culture is grown with this little piece of tape. Don't worry about cross-contamination. Nothing grows in an uninoculated tube even after one week. The cultures are spun in the centrifuge for 30 seconds, max speed. You can see the LB is clear and the pellet is at the bottom. The supernatant is discarded and will be bleached later. You can see we have an E. coli pellet there. One hundred microliters of solution one is then added to the E. coli pellets. The bacteria can be resuspended by vortexing or pipetting. Here I'm showing the use of a multi vortexer. It is very important that the pellet is completely resuspended if you want to get maximum DNA yield. You can see there's no more chunks of E. coli. Next, we'll add 200 microliters of solution 2 to the resuspended E. coli that will lyse the cells. Mix by gentle shaking. You should not shake hard at this point. It should be gentle and you'll see a clear lysate. The lysate will become slightly clearer. Next, 75 microliters of ice cold or free fridge cold Solution 3 are added to precipitate proteins and genomic DNA. The tubes can be mixed with the aid of an inner pipe uh, test tube rack. If the hole, if there's a hole in the tube that was not taped, the tube should not be completely inverted upside down, just turned to their side. You can see a precipitate has formed. Then the tubes will be put in an ice cold rock that is kept in the minus 20 freezer for one minute. This will further the precipitation reaction to get more of the, the protein and genomic DNA out of solution. Then the tubes will be spun at maximum speed for five minutes. Now you'll see a precipitate at the bottom of the tube and you'll see the lysate looks a little bit clearer again. There may also be some floating precipitate. We'll transfer 375 microliters of the cleared lysate carefully with a pipette 
we put the pipette tip on the opposite side of the pellet. We don't want to take any of that white pellet material. Notice that my solution is very clear inside of the pipette tip, but there is some white stuff on the outside of the pipette tip. Keep your place by moving samples. We have, there we have our cleared um, solution. And we have the leftover pellet that we're gonna discard. Next we'll add isopropanol, 225 microliters. This will precipitate the plasma DNA. Mix the tubes well by either vortexing or shaking. You can discard uh, precipitated pellets. Spin at maximum speed for five minutes. The DNA, the DNA will be pelleted on the outside of the rotor. So if you put the hinge side of the tube on the outside, that's where the pellet will be. It will be spread across that side of the tube and will not be a fine pellet. It will actually be a very dispersed pellet. Coating that wall of the tube. Discard the supernatant carefully into our bleach container. Then wash the pellet with 70% ethanol by squirting it on the opposite side of the pellet. Invert our tubes gently a few times to mix the 70% ethanol there. We're going to give a very brief spin just to collect the 70% ethanol in the bottom of the tube. It can be just 5 to 10 seconds. Discard the 70% ethanol. and close the tube gently. Spin the tubes down again for five to 10 seconds to collect the residual ethanol at the bottom of the tube. We'll use a pipette to remove the, rem the remainder of the 70% ethanol. This way we'll have no re remaining ethanol in the tube. Again, stay away from the pellet, pipette on the opposite side where the pellet is. There, now the tube is almost entirely dry. To further dry the tubes, we can put them on their side for about one minute, one to two minutes. Then finally, we'll add 75 microliters of crisp buffer. You could also add water or TE buffer, it's your choice and the volume can be your choice too, depending on how concentrated you would like your final DNA solution to be. Redissolve the pellet by vortexing hard. 
the DNA, the liquid will coat the outside of the tube if you have DNA. Remember the pellet is not just at the bottom of the tube. This is what your DNA quality will look like from this procedure on a nanodrop. You can see that I got 578 nanograms per microliter in a total of 75 microliters making it a 43 micro, microgram yield for this plasma prep from 1.7 ml culture. And on a, on a gel, if I load about 500 nanograms or one microliter of that DNA, this is what the DNA looks like. See very strong, thick plasma band and not too much other stuff. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and click the bell notification icon if you'd like to get notifications for future protocol videos. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments section and we'll answer them. There are a couple other videos you could check out if you have time to kill them.